pharmacy in the inner city. Uh, he is a gentleman who has studied for many years health care in America. He is Celester Flowers, and we're privileged to have him as our guest. Um, how does the Ramsell Corporation differ from the Flowers Heritage Foundation cell? Let me start with the foundation Please. and what's unique about it. And for those who are watching or listening, if you want to contribute after this interview, uh, we make it very simple for you. What's unique about our foundation? The Ramsell Corporation or the Ramsell Holding Corporation funds the, the infrastructure growth and development and support for the foundation. Uh, United Way, for example, I'm told in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, uses approximately 17 percent of the revenue that's contributed through the various doors and windows they make available. Uh, and uh, use 17 percent of that collected for administrative costs. For the Flowers Heritage Foundation, if you gave me a dollar, uh, my uh, uh, external audit company of Deloitte and Touche that mm -hmm. most people would recognize can assure you that 100 percent of whatever you give is used in direct patient assistance and care. But whether, excuse me, but for whether it's 17 percent or 9 percent mm -hmm. or whatever, we should acknowledge also that there are a lot of fine organizations Absolutely. who still have some administrative costs. They have Absolutely. desks and telephones. Absolutely. But since uh, uh, the Flowers family also uh, are the principals in the, in the, the Ramsell Corporation. Got the kids working. Huh? Yes. Uh, so we, we're able to attract uh, the highest uh, caliber of administrators in nonprofit type organizations and pay them competitive salaries and, and benefit packages and very little turnover. So for rent and office space, phones and all, all of the things that running a business uh, needs to do, we provide that. And so we simply use the foundation to uh, receive the grants and, and, and philanthropy across the community. And I've learned something from uh, uh, the Democratic uh, candidate for president. Uh, uh, give me $10. And I will assure you that ten dollars is used for direct patient care, or a thousand dollars, or a hundred thousand dollars, and that is unique. We believe, and has resulted in our succeeding in fundraising and sponsoring of applications. We just sponsored uh, a program in the city of Oakland in which we had experts in HIV treatment and administration, nonprofit to for-profit entities. Uh, the title of the the gathering was the third decade, if you will, of HIV and where do we go from here in terms of a treatment and encouraging people to be tested and these kinds of things. Tremendous and strides have been made in that Tremendous area. strides. When we started in the HIV administration of prescription benefit plans, which is the, the, the principal uh, source of revenue and, and, and outreach uh, for the HIV community, uh, there was one drug. And now the last thing you want to do is to use a single drug in treating. You've heard the word cocktails sure. and, and combination therapy. Uh, that's the hallmark of treatment strategy in HIV. Yes, we've come a long way. Uh, Still, I can't think of anybody I would rather be talking to today than you specifically about not only health care in America, treatment of HIV AIDS, but also the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, you were that guy in the white smock behind the glass for a long, long time. And uh, I have to tell you, there's always that question in my mind. I know about research and I know about all the creativity that has to go into the creation of a drug. But I still don't understand how it is that a pill can, uh, I, I say this metaphorically, uh, a, a pill can cost $100 in America and $17.50 in Canada. I just don't understand that at all, particularly with barriers placed in our freedom to be able to buy the seventeen dollar and fifty cent mm -hmm. pill. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, America is no longer the the, the uh, residence for the major pharmaceutical companies. Uh, it, it's an international economy now. 
Uh, we don't enjoy the political influences in America through the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association, for example, that we enjoyed 20 years ago. Now, now having said that, uh, there's some global e economic strategies that says uh, pills from a given U.S. manufacturer coming off the same assembly line, one is boxed to go to Canada, one is boxed to go to San Francisco, for example. Why the difference? Well, if we use C Canada as an example, uh, to participate in their uh, mainstream health plan, the government will negotiate the fair reimbursement price to the private uh, pharmaceutical uh, community. That doesn't happen in this country. It happens to uh, a slight degree in the Medicaid or Medicare kind of programs in which the, the sponsor or the federal government or co-sponsored federal government and state government will put caps on the unit cost of a given drug. That's all economics. It's some political. Uh, you don't negotiate starting with the same set of tools to negotiate with when in my pharmacy, if I'm providing service to a Medicare provider or a Medicaid provider, um, same drug sold in Canada, I pay more for it, so I'm going to bill more for it. It starts at areas long before it gets to the distribution point in your communities or clinics or hospitals. And we, it's not a simple answer, but it clearly is that one, the manufacturer isn't selling it at the same price internationally. I have one minute left. Okay. I, so I want to ask you right now, if you had the choice of any single thing that Sill Flowers could do, to improve health care in America, what would it be? I would relegate the in-depth study to the needs uh, of the broad spectrum of citizens in this country uh, to see what they need. I think people here in Phoenix would have a different uh, need than, than New Hampshire, for example. We need to know what's needed. We need to start with defining optimum out care, uh, 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 outcomes in patient care. You gotta, dis you gotta start there. And then work your way backwards to find out what are the components necessary to deliver this end product. That means that the leadership has to begin asking questions Absolutely. rather than telling us what the answers Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Sill Flowers Foundation. Now listen, did you hear him before? Say if you're impressed with uh, whatever it is that we're going to be talking about, you may want to say thank you with a check. I'm going to give you the opportunity. <laughs> www.ramselcorp.com, uh, the Flowers Heritage Foundation. You got to come back and see us again. I would love to do that. Thank you for having me. This is Pat. Hey, listen, we're going to take care of your grandchildren, uh, and not necessarily their health, but maybe their bank account. And then there's a gentleman coming along with another kind of pharmaceutical. It's called Pilsner, uh, coming up in just a moment. Money.